Hey guys, happy holidays. Greg here on the Vinyl Rundown. It's the day after Christmas. This is part two in my series of records that we got for Christmas here. Christmas was yesterday, and I think there were about 45 records, CDs, and uh, books that my family gave each other for Christmas. We're a big musical family. We got three record collectors here. Uh, video part one showed my son's stuff, mostly grunge and rock, a little bit of jazz and all my wife's stuff. So now we're going to get into my stuff. A lot of jazz. But first, books. We had four or five books to show. Here's a really nice one called A Hard Day's Right by Steve Turner, who's written a bunch of Beatle books. This is the story behind every single Beatles song ever recorded. Every song you can think of has one or two pages Ticket to Ride, and uh, Magical Mystery Tour, and uh, Helter Skelter. There's a story, a short story, behind every single Beatles song, and you can uh, check it out. Nice, nice high quality book there. Then you guys may know my wife is the world's largest Wilco fan. I showed her Wilco uh, single in the last video from Record Store Day. This is the Wilcopedia. Everything you ever wanted to know about Jeff Tweedy and the boys from Chicago. A comprehensive guide to the music of America's best band. You guys knew Wilco was America's best band, right? So, Wilco, 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 more Wilco. How much Wilco can you possibly read about? Well, why don't you buy two books? Wilco, Learning How to Die by Greg Cott. The Intimate Story of One of the Great American Bands of Our Time. And this is a cheap pulp compared to this beautiful glossy that we did with the Beatles. And that's probably enough Wilco for one day, don't you think? Wait! More Wilco! Wilco, Sunken Treasure by Tim Grierson. In this comprehensive and probing biography, we explore Wilco's history, discussing each of their albums in excruciating detail. I added the excruciating. It's a hardback. My wife's going to read that too. She loves reading. One more book. And there will be some shout-outs in this video, by the way. My wife bought me this beautiful, gigantic book. Hi-Fi. I haven't even cracked the paper on it. But look at that. Is that a TAC? Beautiful tape deck? from the golden age of hi-fi. My dad had a reel-to-reel -reel tape deck. Hi-Fi, the history of high-end audio design is the first book of its kind to explain the why, when, and how the world fell in love with high-end audio. Blah, 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 on Faden. Faden, who does a lot of very high-end photography books. So the shout-out is, I saw this on Mazzy's channel, Norman Masloff, and said, I gotta get that. So the danger of watching all these channels on uh, vinyl community on YouTube is you start spending a lot of money on stuff that you didn't even know existed. Oh, I gotta get that. I gotta buy that. Oh, somebody recommended that. I gotta get it. So that book is probably the most expensive here, expensive thing here. This, on the other hand, is the least expensive thing here that my wife bought me, and I know for a fact it was three for a dollar. Happy Hanukkah. We celebrate a little bit of Hanukkah here. There's a little bit of uh, tribesmanship going on here. KTAV Publishing House, New York, New York, on Unbreakable Vinylette. This is ancient. What is What year is this? From the 50s? It's filthy. But uh, Mother Goose Rhymes and Little Yomo. What does that mean? No idea. All right, what else have we got? Okay, let's get into some of the jazz, guys. Joe Henderson, the state of the tenor on the Blue Note Tone Poet Society. Joe Henderson, great, great tenor player. This is with Ron Foster, Ron Foster, Ron Carter on bass and Al Foster on drums. Boo Boo's Birthday, Thelonious Monk tune, a few other, all kinds of good tunes. Real, recorded live at the Village Vanguard, Vanguard, uh, New York, November 14th, 15th, 16th, and 1985. Uh, produced by Michael Kuskuna and Stanley Crouch. You may know who they are. Uh, Village Vanguard has just the, the best ambience 
of uh, any jazz club, in my opinion. A lot of great records came out of the Village Vanguard. And this is on the Tone Poet uh, collection or series. This is volume two. Wait a minute. Did I want volume one or two? I hope I got the one I wanted. Uh, let's see. On the Blue Note uh, 80th Anniversary series, Kenny Dorham Unamas. One more. And this cover has been featured in some of the Blue Note documentaries because of the design, the way he's grabbing the uh, the letters there. Joe Henderson, again, plays on sax here. Kenny Dorham on trumpet. My buddy Herbie Hancock plays on here. Butch Warren on bass. Tony Williams on drums. It's only three tunes. And I think this has a little bit of a Latin flavor. So the Blue Note 80th Anniversary Series. Okay, how about Record Store Day Jazz? Miles Davis in Tokyo. And I'm pretty sure this is a famous concert because it featured uh, Sam Rivers. Sam Rivers playing either sax or flute. And Sam Rivers was kind of considered almost too avant-garde to play with Miles at the time. And I think Miles maybe asked him to leave and uh, Wayne Shorter took over, I think. Is that the story? Probably have that wrong. Miles in Tokyo. Uh, record Store Day Black Friday release. Uh, this has been a rare record for years now. Available briefly for uh, Record Store Day. Is this a two record set? Feels kind of thick. Okay. Another shout out. Bob Duro. Just about everything. Pretty terrible cover and packaging. What year is this? 1978 on Inner City Records. Uh, this is a shout out again to Mazzy, Norman Masloff. I mentioned Bob Duro on my channel a couple of weeks ago because he played on the Miles Davis, uh, he sang on the Miles Davis Blue Xmas track. And then Mazzy commented, Oh, the good Bob Duro album is this one on Inner City. So I listened to it online, sounded pretty good. Bob Duro is like a almost cabaret style singer, jazz piano player, plays, accompanies himself on piano. Kind of in the style of Mose Allison, but you youngsters may know Bob Duro because he was a musical director on Schoolhouse Rock in the 70s. And these are a bunch of cool, uh, well, let's see, some standards, some not standards. What songs are on here? Better Than Anything is the, is the, the best song on here, I think. So, again, The Dangers of Watching, The uh, Vinyl Community on YouTube, I'm going to buy a bunch of stuff. Okay. And here's, a, here's an expensive one. Bill Frizzell. I did a whole video just on Bill Frizzell about two weeks ago. Bill Frizzell, amazing, amazing guitar stylist, unlike anybody else in music. And this is just a duet of him and a very young bass player named Thomas Morgan, who I hadn't really heard of. But I listened to some of these tunes online. And I was lamenting a while ago that I sort of got out of touch with Bill Frizzell's latest um, catalog. So I haven't bought as many of his records in the last 10 years as I was buying in the 90s and early 2000s. So uh, an ECM production made in Germany, which means it's probably a little expensive. Oh, live at the Village Vanguard again. I told you, Village Vanguard sounds beautiful. What tunes are on here? Panonica? Thelonious Monk tune, Red River Valley, Epistrophe, another Thelonious Monk tune, in the wee small hours of the morning, which is, uh, you guys know Frank Sinatra singing that one. I don't know what that painting is, but, oh, the record is called Epistrophe, kind of Thelonious Monk's signature tune. So, uh, double record on ECM. When, when are we going to have time to listen to all this? We've just got a couple left here, guys, maybe two. How about Andrew Hill? And this has Joe Henderson again. We've got three records with Joe Henderson today. On the Tone Poet series with uh, Bob Harley. Is that his name? Joe Harley, sorry. Joe Harley supervising the reissues. These Tone Poet reissues on Blue Note, very high quality, very high sound quality from the original masters. Andrew Hill, Blackfire, one of the more avant-garde uh, composers on Blue Note. So you're not going to hear him doing standards. All his tunes are pretty original and they're pretty cutting edge. So Joe Henderson, Andrew Hill, Roy Haynes on drums. Roy Haynes in his 90s 
is still getting it done on the drum. So what year is this? What year does this go back to? 1963. Oh my gosh. This was recorded within a few days of my personal birth. I won't tell you when that was. So, hey, special record. Okay. Last but not least, Donald Bird chant, also on the Blue Note Tone Poets series. So the shout out here is to Eric Weinbender who went on and on about how Donald Byrd was so influential to him and maybe it was his father's favorite and helped him get into jazz. And I looked at my collection and I said, I don't have that much Donald Byrd. I really don't have much Donald Byrd Blue Note stuff. I've got, you know, Freddie Hubbard and Lee Morgan. And so I went online to listen to this one. It sounded great. Herbie Hancock, again, my buddy on piano. Uh, this is more like standards and stuff, but Sounded great online that few minutes that I listened to, and that's been one of the more popular uh, releases on the Blue Note Tone Poets series, guys. That is something like 45 pieces of music, LPs, CDs, books, singles. What else can I tell you? I got a lot of listening to do. I haven't listened to any of this stuff yet. So, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays. And uh, consider subscribing and consider uh, turning on notifications if you want to be notified as soon as one of my videos drop. I got a lot of videos uh, queued up if I can find time to get to them in the next uh, few weeks over the holidays. So look forward to uh, some more of my videos and thank you for watching. Enjoy spinning those records, guys. Bye bye.